In this part, we are going to understand about the physical features of India. But before understanding the part of the physical features of India, we need to understand the actual meaning of physical features. What are physical features? The next physical feature of our country is the Thar Desert. When we talk about the Thar Desert, so Thar Desert is actually lying to the western margins of the Aravlis and if we talk about the characteristics of this particular region, that is the desert region. The another physical feature of our country is the part of the coastal plains or the coastal region and first of all we are going to understand about the western coastal plains. Hello dear students. So, in this part, we are going to understand about the physical features of India. But before understanding the part of the physical features of India, we need to understand the actual meaning of physical features. What are physical features? All those features which we can see from our naked eyes, which we can touch, which we can feel, are the part of the physical features. And when we are talking about all these features, with the context of a country like India. So we can say that India has a wide range of physical features such as the Himalayan mountains, the northern plains, the peninsular plateau, the Indian desert, the coastal plains and the islands. And we are going to understand all these features one by one. So the first physical feature of our country that is the northern Himalayas or we can say the part of the great Himalayas, they are stretched over the northern boundaries of our country and it runs in the direction from west to east or we can say from Indus to Brahmaputra. Now here we can see the Himalayas consist of three parallel ranges which are on the basis of their longitudinal extent. So the first and foremost range is the great or the inner Himalayas or the Himadris, these are the most continuous ranges and consist of most loftiest and the prominent ranges like Mount Everest, Kanchanjunga, Makalu or we can say Nanga, Parbat etc. These all are the loftiest and the prominent ranges of the world. Their height is above or we can say on an average above than 6,000 meters. Now south of these ranges that is a part of the inner Himalayas, the south of these inner Himalayas, the another range is the Himachal or the lesser Himalayas and their height varies from 3700 meters to 4500 meters and they are the most rugged ranges. South of the lesser Himalayas we have the range or we can say we have the outermost range that is known as the Shivaliks and their height varies from 900 meters to 1100 meters. The next physical feature of our country is the northern plains and these northern plains are also known as the granaries of India and they are formed due to the interplay of the three major Himalayan rivers and their tributaries that is the Indus, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra and it actually spreads over an area of 7 lakh square kilometers. But when this term plains comes in our mind, we find or we think that it is a flat plain. But here we need to understand that there are some variations based on some particular relief features. So we need to understand all those variations. Now after descending from the mountains, rivers actually uh, collect all these pebbles in a narrow belt parallel to the Shiva lakes and this belt is of 8 to 16 kilometers of width and all the streams and the rivers actually get disappear in this Bhabar belt because they are flowing beneath from these boulders. And after that, all these streams and rivers re-emerge at the part of the Tarai region which is the wet 
swampy and marshy region. When we talk about the northern plains, the most of the part of the northern plains are actually made up of the older alluvium which actually create a terrace-like feature or we can say that the part of the flood plains it create a terrace-like feature and the soil of the Bhangar region or we can say the older alluvium has a characteristics of calcareous deposits which is actually known as the Kankar and the newer alluvium part is known as the Khadar. Now the next physical feature of our country is the Thar Desert. When we talk about the Thar Desert, so Thar Desert is actually lying to the western margins of the Aravlis and if we talk about the characteristics of this particular region that is the desert region so it actually have the sandy plains covered with the sand dunes and it actually receives very low rainfall below 150 mm per year and it has a dry climatic conditions with low vegetation cover now next we'll going to understand about the part of the Arauli ranges and the Vindhyachal ranges when we talk about the Aravlis, they are actually forming the oldest part or we can say they are there before the emergence of the northern Himalayas and its major point that is the highest point of the Aravli is the Guru Shikhar which we can locate at the part of Mount Abu in Rajasthan. And when we talk about the part of the Vindhyas ranges, so these mountains are actually located in the central India and it runs in east-west through the state of Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh and it actually separates the part of the northern Indian plains in the north from the Deccan Plateau in the south. The, another important physical feature of our country, India, is the peninsular plateau. Now, what do you mean by the peninsula? The body which is actually surrounded by water from the three side is actually known as the peninsula and it is a table land which is actually composed of crystalline igneous and metamorphic rocks and they are formed due to the breaking and drifting of the Gondwana land and one of the distinctive feature of this peninsula plateau is the part of the black soil area which is known as the Deccan trap and here this plateau can be divided into two broad divisions first one is the central highland and the other one is the Deccan plateau and the distinctive feature is the Narmada river north of the Narmada river we will find the part of the central highland which actually covers major portion of the Malwa plateau and its eastward extension can be identified as Bundelkhand and Bagelkhand the south of the Narmada river we will find the part of the Deccan plateau and it is a triangular landmass and its northeast extension can be visible through Meghalaya, Kirby Anglong Plateau and North Kachar Hills. The another physical feature of our country is the part of the coastal plains or the coastal region and first of all we are going to understand about the western coastal plains. So if we talk about the western coastal plains, so they are actually sandwiched between the western Ghats and the Arabian Sea and they are quite narrow in nature and they are actually divided into three parts. The northern stretch is called as the Konkan that is from Mumbai to Goa. The central stretch is called the Kannad Plains from Goa to Mangalore and the southern stretch is actually referred as the Malabar Coast which is between Kerala and Karnataka. Next if we talk about the part of the eastern coastal plains if you see the eastern coastal plains they are quite broad in nature as compared to the western coastal plains and they are dissected also because the east flowing rivers like Krishna, Kaveri, Godavari, Mahanadi they create extensive deltas here and this part of eastern coastal plains they are actually sandwiched between the eastern Ghats and the Bay of Bengal and they are divided into two part the northern part is known as the northern Sirkar and the southern part is known as the Koromandal coast. Now the next physical feature of a country that is the island group so in the part of Arabian Sea we will find out the Lakshadweep island and if we talk about the Lakshadweep island they are actually known as the coral islands 
and what do you mean by coral that is the important thing so they are the uh, small microscopic organism which used to secrete the calcium carbonate and they used to uh, live in the part of the colonies they are millions in numbers and earlier this island group is actually known as the Lacadive, Minicoy and Amandive. The next part of island group which lies in the part of Bay of Bengal is Andaman and Nicobar Island. So when we talk about Andaman and Nicobar Island the northern part is of the Andaman and the southern part is of the Nicobar Island. When we see this part of Andaman and Nicobar Island so it is near to the equator it's quite close to the equator and it actually experience the part of the equatorial climate and have a thick forest cover. So I hope whatever we have gone through in this particular part, you must have understood it.